Hey everybody, uh, welcome again. We're going to have a special commuter edition of uh, Jeremy's Tips and Handy Hints, where Jeremy gives his points of view on all things commuting. So uh, if it's summer and it's getting warmer and you're uh, looking at commuting to work, here's Jeremy with a few of his tips on how to get out there and commute safely. Thanks, Al. Okay, commuting by a scooter. We all know scooters are fun, that's why you bought the thing in the first place. But they're a lot more useful as, than that as well. Um, I commute by scooter because it's quick, it's easy, it's cheap, it's clean, it's efficient. I've commuted by motorcycle, by car, by bicycle. Scooter ha wins hands down. And why is that? Well, partly because of the storage. When I get to work, I can put my helmet, my jacket under the seat. I can walk in like a normal person. I don't have to lug all that gear around as I would with a motorcycle. Um, compared with a car, it's quick, you can filter between traffic, being careful not to lane split with moving cars. Um, it's manoeuvrable, it's easy, it's quick, and the thing I like most of all, it's cheap. My commute's not very big, but I can commute for six weeks for $4.25 on a 50cc scooter. Now, in terms of cheapness, that beats everything. Probably even cheaper than walking. Okay, before you start commuting, there are a couple of things that you should add to your wardrobe. When you're riding a scooter, or at any time, um, think about extremities. What can hit the ground first? Now, that means hands, so gloves are a necessity. Helmet, obviously, because it's a legal requirement. Whether you choose an open face or a full face is up to you. But if you have an open face and one with a, a visor that pivots down, it's probably a good idea for eye protection. Boots or shoes, uh, closed to toe shoes are a minimum requirement. I see a lot of people commuting in thongs, sandals. Nice and easy, but um, the potential for damage is, is severe. So keep your dress shoes under the seat, wear some sturdy boots, then change when you get to work. That's probably the best idea. Same with jacket and pants. If you want to have an oversuit or overalls to protect your clothes from road grime, that's fine. Uh, the last thing I would suggest is, in case of inclement weather, um, a, a set of lightweight coverall wet weather gear just rolled up under the seat, just in case you get caught between home and the office or the office and home in a sudden downpour. That pretty much covers what you need to wear. OK, what to look for when you're commuting in traffic. Now, Riding in, in commuter traffic is slightly different from just riding around generally on the weekend to the beach, to the cafe, um, out for lunch with friends, that kind of thing. The reason is everybody does the same trip every day. They know where they're going, they know what's happening, and often they don't pay particular attention to, to um, what's going on around them. Part of that is because their minds focus on getting to the work, getting to the office, what work they have to do, or on the way home, they're tired, focusing on getting home, having a drink, unwinding. They may not pay particular attention to what's happening at the, same time, at the same time that you're out there with them in the traffic. Now, there are a couple of things to look for. One thing I always do when I'm riding is I ride in a position where I can see the driver in front of me in two of the three mirrors. That means the central rear vision mirror and one of the wing mirrors. That way I know that the driver can see me. That's staying out of a driver's blind spot. That's very important. Another thing I try to do at the same time is not to, draw, to ride directly next to someone in a lane, just in case they're going to change lanes into me or if I need an escape path. I try to keep a buffer around me, both front and rear, and to the sides as well. That gives me options just in case something happens, because the main thing about riding and riding and commuting is you want to identify hazards before they become problems. That's just they become something that you can deal with, you can keep riding and you get to work or home safe and sound. Now, one of the, the chief benefits of scooters is their narrow width. That means you can squeeze through gaps um, which are denied to other road users. Now, I don't advocate lane splitting, which in my definition is riding between moving vehicles. However, I do think that filtering, which is right, coming to the front of a set of traffic lights while the traffic is stopped, is okay. Now, it's technically illegal in many states and territories in Australia, but as long as you do it sensibly, it tends to be fairly OK. So as long as you take that warning on board, that should be fine. One of the issues with filtering is that you're often doing it between parked cars and cars that are stopped at traffic lights. Now, with parked cars, there are a couple of very important things to look out for. 
Firstly, indicators. If a parked car puts on its indicator, it's a good chance that it's going to pull out into the traffic or try to nose out to squeeze in. Be aware of that and adjust accordingly. Another thing I like to do when I'm going past parked cars is to look at the rear vision mirrors because if I can see a face in a rear vision mirror, I know there's the potential that someone may open the door, may pull out, may do something silly. That's um, another clue that, that's very useful to me. A third one is to look at the angle of the wheels. If you can see the wheels pointing out into the roadway, again, someone may just decide that it's breaking the traffic or to nose out in front of you. I know that's a lot to look out for, but once you start doing it, it becomes second nature and you'll suddenly realise that you're not having as many incidents on the traffic on the, the um, commute as you did initially. And that's part of your traffic sixth sense. It builds up with time. I know it, it sounds intimidating to go out in the traffic, in commuting traffic, which can be high speed, but once you get used to it, with a couple of simple rules, it's a great deal of fun. And you get to work a lot earlier and get home a lot earlier than your car-bound compatriots. OK, perhaps you're looking at this and you don't have a scooter, but you would like to have a scooter for commuting. Now, best decision you could make. In fact, if you crunch the numbers, it's probably cheaper to run a scooter and a car than just the car alone in terms of a fuel, tyre wear, mechanicals, all that sort of thing. So, what scooter is the best for you? That's a question I can't answer. I can give you some tips and help you make an informed decision. For my commute, which is about five kilometres each way, a 50 is fine. I've commuted on 50s, 125s, 200s, 250s, 400s, 500s, 1,000 plus superbikes. 50cc scooter is fine. Most of it is back roads, a little bit of, of main road use, but nothing's over 50 kilometres an hour. If, however, you live slightly further afield or are using major roads, maybe a 125 would be a better bet. Um, they should be able to carry enough speed to keep with the traffic. If uh, you are looking at further afield, freeway use perhaps, uh, maybe a 30, 40 minute commute, something, something that's slightly bigger, a 250 or a 400 would do. One thing you need to consider when you're scootering and you're commuting is what you need to carry. Is it a briefcase? Is it a computer bag? Is it something that can't get wet? Will it fit beneath the seat? When you get to where you're going, will your helmet, jacket and gloves fit beneath the seat or do you have to carry them into the lift, up to the office or around with you? Those things can be sorted out at a scooter dealership. You take your stuff, sit it under all the scooters, see what fits, see what works. At the same time, make sure you sit on the scooters, roll them off the stands, make sure that you're comfortable with the weight of them, how they feel. They're not too tall for you, not too small, there's enough leg room and you can get them back onto the stands easily enough because those are the day-to-day -day things which will change scootering from a joy to a misery and from a misery to a joy. Another thing to look for is where the fuel uh, cap is. Is there any chance that when you're filling up the scooter fuel will overflow into the, the, um, the storage receptacle and coat your clothes, coat your laptop, coat your helmet with petrol? Check out that kind of thing. Just make sure that the scooter you get is the one you want and the one that suits you best. And remember, it's not your last scooter, it's your first scooter. So enjoy commuting, choose wisely, and you'll have a lot of fun. Yeah.